of us socialized in a nation that is planted in our psychological, in our subconscious of our mind, that one group is more valuable mm -hmm. than, than another. And you don't have to do this consciously, it's unconscious. I remember my niece, one of my nieces, her name is Genesis, she was about maybe seven years old, and she had two Barbie dolls. She had a white Barbie and a chocolate Barbie. She had a vanilla Barbie and a chocolate Barbie. <laughs> and she was over at my house, and she just left chocolate Barbie all by herself. And I, I was wondering what was going on. And her mama came to pick her up. She said, Auntie, I'm going to leave chocolate Barbie with you. I'm going to take vanilla Barbie. Being the social scientist that I am, I had to ask a couple questions. <laughs> so I wanted to know why my niece was going to leave chocolate Barbie with me. And she said, she said, you know, this Barbie, vanilla Barbie, has longer hair. I said, well, let's put them side by side. Sisters and brothers, there was no difference in the length of that hair. You know why she took vanilla Barbie over chocolate Barbie? Because in her mind, in her mind, in her mind, in her mind. Not that her, nobody sat her down and told her that. But the images bombarding her little black mind told her that one Barbie doll was more valuable, was beautiful than the other. So that's what the Black Lives Matter movement was about, just asking for transparency and justice in a system that has been unjust. And I say that as a mother of a police officer, a wife of a retired police officer, somebody who can relate on all sides, want to see my two men come home safely, but understanding, as Ice Cube put it, our skin is our sin. Mm, wow. Crying the tears of black mamas mm. who know, who have to say to their babies, we got to teach them a different lesson. Yes. I rarely share this story, but I'm going to share it in Jersey. You got me feeling some type of way. Because <laughs> I want to make a final point, and it is important that in coalition building, that when we build coalitions, we got to understand each other's Yes. yes. Because there'll be some rooms that you'll be in that I won't be in. But if you are able to articulate the pain of another, you can lift this thing. We got to have some understanding. That when I was pregnant with my son, and my husband is light skinned with red hair, and being a dark skinned African American woman, black from a distance. Black from a distance. From a distance. <laughs> <laughs> sister walk in the room, you know. <laughs> and you know, I'm just I'm just thinking about the pain of being black. All right now. Can you wonder what the one of my secret lies? <laughs> I'm not cute to build the suit of fashion model size. Go ahead, Dr. Angelo. <laughs> But now I'm a woman, baby, yes. But um, see, you're messing up my story, guys. <laughs> but uh, I just want to put a final point on this thing, which is, you know, when I was pregnant with my son and just recounting the struggle, what it means to be black in America. And I'm praying to God. And as I said, I rarely tell this part of my life story. I don't even know if my son knows this or not, but now I'm telling millions of people. <laughs> I wanted my son to have my husband's complexion. And not because I'm ashamed of my beautiful chocolateness, but I knew to be born black in America, and then to be dark skin, it has another layer to the struggle. See, black mamas endure that, knowing that when you birth a child in the world, that the first thing they will be judged by is the color of their skin. That what we are fighting for as a progressive movement is the eradication of that kind of thought, that kind of behavior. But we have to push. See, this is de jure, de jure, and de facto. It is about what we do in practice, but what also was cemented in laws in this country, Jim Crow laws in this country, black codes in this country. 
And so we are all socialized as much as we try to fight it. And we all have to fight it. To not think of race in a way that denigrates the other person. That is what Dr. Reverend, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. meant when he said that he wanted people to be judged by the content of their character. Yes. To be given a fighting chance to live a good life. That is what we are fighting for. So sisters and brothers in the progressive movement, we do have to understand, we do have to declare, we can't be afraid to say what my brother said up here, that racial justice is a thing. So I wanted to ask you, you told your story and clearly emotional story about your son and his complexion and what you wanted for him. And I wanted to ask what, what and when or how was the resolu uh, resolution of that story? Well, you know, I got a healthy baby boy. He's a police officer, young man, I should say. Um, when you're a mother, though, your, your children are always your baby. But he's, you know, he's a beautiful, caramel child. But the moral of the story that I was telling is that because of the pressures of blackness, what I wanted is that even though I knew he was going to be born, you know, black in America, to try to lessen the pressure and the burden of that was to be lighter skin because colorism is a thing in this country. It's a thing within the black community because we've been brainwashed to believe that closer to white you are, the better you are, the more attractive you are. That's embedded in our DNA. And so as a mother understanding the history of my people, I just wanted to lessen some of the burden on my child. And at the time I didn't know that I was gonna have a son, but you know, knowing that I was gonna have bring a baby in this world, I just wanted them to be lighter skin only to just lift a little bit of that burden off of them. And that's a sad place to be. A sad feeling to have in this country that it's already embedded that the closer to white you are, the more privileges you have, the more people will see you as beautiful and intelligent than if you are born your brown self. You want to do the rat race instead of your, the truth because right. the rat race in the short term yeah. sometimes works. I mean, it's, it's just terrible. So, you know, we're fighting for a world where no mother will have to even just even have that thought that we will have true equality and justice and that we will judge people based on their character, as Dr. King said, and not by, you know, not just because of their color, not just because of their phenotype, but even as we fight racism, my story, and a lot of us don't talk about it, even in the black community, it's hard to talk about colorism. We do it, it's intra, we do it too.